All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we're gonna to be talking about PETA once again, because you know, every once in a while they come along with something new that's stupid and makes no sense. And usually whatever they do, it just kind of stays at that, right? It's just dumb for the sake of being dumb. Nobody really pays any attention to it unless we're all like laughing at them and kind of pointing and whatnot. But their most recent little marketing stunt that they did is not only just disgusting in the first place, but it's morbid and very, very weird. And I'm just kind of confused on, you know, I get why they're doing it, right? I understand what point they're trying to make and whatnot, what they're trying to say with this, but why would you do this considering you know it's going to get backlash? I feel like PETA, you know, their marketing stunts, they think they're going down like the Grand Theft Auto route, okay? A big selling point for like Grand Theft Auto and games like that and people who do this type of marketing strategy is, you know, they do a bunch of stuff that gets people all riled up, right? In I guess Grand Theft Auto's instance, it's like the fact that it's a violent game. You can steal cars and rob people and kill the police and all kinds of stuff, right? They, they have these things that people get mad about, right? And when it gets reported on in the news or it gets talked about on social media, it essentially becomes a marketing campaign because it brings everybody's eyes onto whatever it is that is controversial. And that's, you know, that's kind of what the philosophy is for PETA. That's like the ideology they subscribe to. They try their hardest to be like super out of pocket with the things that they do so that people can, I guess, get really weirded out or freaked out by what they do and talk about it. And by doing that, it's supposed to grow the amount of people who support PETA because, well, they're becoming aware of what they are as a brand and whatnot. And I don't think that that's working. I'm going to be honest. I got a good feeling for some reason that it's just not doing the intended job. And it just blows my mind because like what we're about to take a look at today is just so disgusting. And obviously that's the intended effect, right? They got me. They got all of us for thinking that this is gross, but... It would never work as one of these like popular because it's hated designs, okay? Like this would never make me go to the PETA website and research anything on their page, okay? I mean, they, they wouldn't need for me to do that because I understand how this company works. Or I should say how this organization works because it's like a charitable effort and whatnot apparently. But uh, you know, in this video, we're gonna go through what they did, we're gonna talk about it, and then we're gonna talk about some other things that I feel like it could be more widely reported about PETA because, you know, uh, PETA obviously stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, right? And they always do all these different stunts to promote veganism and being nice to animals and treating them on the same playing field as humans and, you know, not owning pets or using phrases that are animal cruelty and, and all this other shit, right? But a lot of people don't know that this company has such a shady history when it comes to animals and they've done some pretty fucked up things that completely outnumber pretty much anything you've ever done to an animal in your life, right? So, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals has taken aim at trendy shops such as Urban Outfitters with the launch of its satirical store, Urban Outraged, featuring items supposedly crafted from, quote, human parts. The shop features a number of clothing and accessories, quote, made from the finest leather that on second look reveal human faces on the jackets, human teeth on the shoes, and blood, hu uh, human blood actually oozing from the bags. According to a press release, the campaign reminiscent of Buffalo Bill's human suit from 1991's The Silence of the Lambs was designed to put a spotlight on popular retailers that continue to peddle clothing made of animal leathers and furs. One of the urban outraged taglines describes it as, quote, fashions that dare to ask the question, who are you wearing? A cow's skin belongs to her and she feels fear and pain in a slaughterhouse every bit as much as you or I would, PETA's executive vice president Tracy Riemann said in an exclusive statement to the Post. Items sold on Urban Outraged feature the proverbial names of quote, slaughtered people whose organs were used to fabricate the goods, many of which retain some of their corporeal form, such as a suitcase adorned with human nipples. Okay, obviously, this is just gonna be fucking morbid. I am gonna show you guys photos, uh, if you don't wanna see pictures, because I will warn, they are kinda gross looking. If you don't wanna see the pictures, skip a little bit uh, ahead in the video or so here. I'm just gonna show them all at once, pretty much, and just kinda talk about them here. So what you're taking a look at on the screen right now are a bunch of different images of some of the items that showed up on this satirical store. Obviously, you know, a jacket that has human faces and skin stitched together, duffel bags made out of human skin, fucking house slippers, you know, comfortable jackets and suitcases, all kinds of different things, right? Just very weird stuff. Now, the point that's being made, I guess, 
with these different items is clear, right? Because obviously in order to make leather jackets and fur coats and things like that, you have to kill animals and, you know, harvest their skin. It is a very, it's a very gruesome process. I mean, I think anyone who understands how that works uh, will agree. I mean, obviously slaughterhouses, things die, right? There's a lot of gruesome treatment and obviously in a lot of slaughterhouses, the treatment of animals there is definitely subpar. I mean, you've seen chicken coops where the areas are so small that chickens can barely move around. You know, they're fighting each other because they're so cooped up together. Employees, when they're wanting to kill like baby pigs, I've seen in some videos, they'll like pick them up by their necks and like slam them on the concrete floor. And obviously the way that animals are treated in these types of slaughterhouse is absolutely obscene and pretty much anybody, including people like me who eat meat, can agree that is not how you should treat an animal. Even if its final fate is to become a double cheeseburger deluxe, you know what I'm saying? You don't need to slam a fucking animal by its neck to kill it, right? Do something a little bit more humane. And PETA likes to make the argument there is no humane way to kill an animal, but yet they don't address the fact that they've killed thousands of dogs, including people's family pets. Over the years, you know what I'm saying? They, they've killed more animals than pretty much any restaurant I've ever eaten at, I would think. Uh, except for like, you know, the fast food places or whatever. But obviously these products are disgusting. Dis uh, the, I, the, I don't even know what to say anymore, man. Like, I know it's pretty gross and everything. And, you know, if it grossed you out or whatever, I'm sorry. But like, I obviously had to show you what they were making. As far as I understand, these are not genuinely being sold. Obviously, they would not get away with selling like a fucking human skin leathered skirt or something crazy like that. It's just some sort of like satirical joke. I don't think you can really order anything at all. I really do get the point and whatnot, but it's like so fucking disgusting because at the end of the day, nobody wants to see this kind of shit. You know what I mean? Do you think people don't understand how leather products are made? Like, I'm not sure what they think. I, I think they believe that the general public is just like, oh, leather is printed in a factory. Like, no, everyone knows how a fucking fur coat is made, okay? And I get that they're trying to raise awareness around it and change how people think, but this is not the way. If you want to change how people think, there are much better ways than to make something so morbid and disgusting. Because this just kind of pisses people off, you know what I mean? This is like serial killer mentality shit. Like if I, I don't know, let's say I walk in my friend's room or whatever and he's like, oh bro, you want to see some of the new designs I did for PETA? And he, he's showing me fucking human skin shirts and stuff. Low key, I'm going to the anonymous tip of the FBI, uh, the FBI and I'm leaving them motherfuckers a report. You know what I'm saying? Like they're coming to, they're paying you a visit. Because this is some weirdo shit. This is odd. Like, I, I don't understand, you know, who did this? Like, was this one person who did all the art or whatever? Like... I would love to be a fly on the wall of that boardroom while they were having this conference. How do we, you know, raise awareness about our mission here? Well, the fuck it, let's make the human skirt. Like, I would love to hear what they had to say. Because they probably thought this was such a good idea, man. They probably thought they killed it with this, no pun intended. But all they've done is turn me and thousands of people even further away from their message. Because I don't know what PETA thinks people think. Like, that you have to make the most various extreme measure possible to, to preach a message to me. This is the fucking problem with PETA, right? They, they go to these ridiculous extremes, they make nobody like them because they do these ridiculous extremes, and then they wonder why no one fucking agrees with them. Let me tell you, okay, I, I had Taco Bell for lunch today, right? Had some tacos, okay? So I had some beef. Well, it, it's not fucking some sort of, you know, synthetic gray paste meat that's made on a conveyor belt, but hypothetically, I guess I had some beef today, all right? And uh, so I'm one of these people who eats meat. I guess I'm like the, the target demographic for a PETA ad because they want to change my mind and make me go vegan and whatnot, but... As someone who would genuinely consider a vegan diet if it wasn't so fucking politicized all the time, I have to tell you this is the exact opposite way to make me want to, you know, fall in line with your ideas. I don't need to be preached to with disgusting fucking graphics and these ridiculous obscene, you know, visions that you come up with of different shit. Complaining about the MLB using the term bullpen is not going to make me go vegan, okay? Showing some human leather skirts is not going to make me go vegan. They don't actually ever, it seems like, show any factual information about anything they're saying. They just go to these ridiculous extremes like this and then wonder once again why people just don't give a fuck about what they're saying unless it's to make fun of them. So let me explain this to you guys about PETA, right? You, you see all these things where PETA's talking about how, oh my gosh, you know, it's so horrible uh, how people treat animals, the way that we kill animals and everything, okay? PETA will have you believe that they kill animals as like a last resort, right, okay? They, they, they just 
just come out and they, they kill animals that no one can afford, that no one will take care of, that just live such a miserable life, you know, that they'll never be happy, right? That's essentially what they try to make it out like, like they're just this ethical company or whatever, right? But let, let's go ahead and revisit a story that we, re, we actually have visited in previous videos about PETA, uh, where they actually, back in 2017, were forced to apologize and pay a family $49,000 when they stole a nine-year-old girl's chihuahua and then forcibly put it to sleep killing it. This nine-year-old girl was given this pet chihuahua as a Christmas present and PETA found it unchained or, or unattended or something in the family's yard, took the animal and then put it the fuck to sleep later that day, which is actually against the law because there's a five-day grace period in the state of Virginia where this took place. So they killed the animal illegally. They stole the fucking animal from a child and killed it. But yep, you're right. Uh, you know, PETA, they care so much about animals, right? They care so much about animals that they're essentially the fucking evil version of the Grinch. They'll come and steal your Christmas present dog that you love and fucking kill it within a day because, you know, they consider, I guess, having pets involuntary, you know, kidnapping of an animal or something stupid. And actually, PETA is known for killing thousands of dogs and, and other animals a year through their quote-unquote last resort shelters, you know? But uh, it, it's a very good defense to just say, oh, well, nobody really wants them, so they gotta die. It's crazy, you know, how, how killing animals is okay if you're PETA and shit, but if anyone else does it, it's a problem. But of course, you know, please preach to me how much you love animals by making this human leather jacket joke or whatever, right? Once again, this is the reason why I don't listen to PETA and why I just don't care about the messages that they say unless I can just make fun of these motherfuckers because these people are so fake about their care for animals. They're so fake about what they say. They don't even follow it in private. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to optimus Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus. Just reacting to what PETA had to say and signing out.